Gates, I will be welcoming you to St. James North, where a ba the battle of all battles is now underway. And I want to assure you this evening that all the work that is necessary to return the seat in St. James North for the Democratic Labour Party is now being done. We still have a ways to go. We still have a ways to go. But I'm confident with the team that we put together that when the bell is rung and that final vote is counted, the Democratic Labour Party will hold the seat in St. James North. But let me begin this evening in a much more somber note. Since this is the first speech I'm making in this context, I want to spend a little time to pay tribute and thank the late Prime Minister David Thompson. Because without David Thompson, I would not be standing in this position this evening. I remember, I was unemployed for a little while. On one Friday evening, I was driving by the gas station in Warrens, and my phone rang, and it was David Thompson. And he invited me to come to see him at El Court the next day. And I went. And the discussion that we had ended with me being named to the Senate and a parliamentary secretary in the Prime Minister's office. And on that day, on that day of the announcement, I made the commitment that the way to repay the trust that was placed in me by the Prime Minister and this party was to do all that I could to ensure that we have another term in office. What is significant about the discussion and the offer that David Thompson made to me was that he did not have to do it. There was nothing, there was all the gain was to me. He was taking a risk on me. After all, a year ago, I was fired from the job I had in a very public way. And I have a little temper, I must admit. And I say something sometimes that on reflection I ought not to have said. So a risk was taken on me by the then Prime Minister and this party. And also I want to use this opportunity to also pay tribute to the current Prime Minister, Fred Del Short, because he carried on. He had every opportunity when he came to office to make whatever changes he thought necessary, and he carried on and placed that same confidence in me. And I have promised, and I'm working every day to deliver the St. James North seat to the Democratic Labour Party as my way of saying thank you to the party, thank you to the leadership, thank you to you for the part that you have played in my current situation. But the chairman spoke a bit about the letter that he says he's going to make public about from the nation. And I'm going to tell you a secret. Do not repeat it. I told it to Clinton. I said, Clinton, I'm telling you a secret. Do not repeat it. He told George. George came to me. I said, that was a secret. Do not repeat it. He told Ronald Jones. But I have confidence this evening in you that you are not going to repeat what I told you. But K. Mark Jordan called me. K. Mark Jordan called me about the letter. I was sitting at my desk. My cell phone rang. I didn't recognize the number. I put her name in it now. 
and I checked before I came here, she called me on the 1st of October at 1.15 in the afternoon. In the afternoon. In the afternoon. She may have called some other people at 1.15 in the morning. But she called me 1.15 in the afternoon. I was at my desk. And I answered the phone. She said, uh, Harry, this is Kemar. Kemar? 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 Who came out Jordan from the nation? Oh, hey, how you doing? She said, we wrote the Prime Minister a letter. And I would like to get it back. We wrote the Prime Minister a letter, and I would like you, meaning me, to help us get it back. I said, but what letter? First of all, start at the beginning. What letter are you talking about? A letter inviting the Prime Minister to the town hall meeting. Okay. And why would you want to get it back? Because it was signed by the marketing assistant. So the nation wrote the Prime Minister of Barbados, and which ever Prime Minister, even if it was Oinaka, even if it were Oinaka, the nation wrote an invitation to the Prime Minister of Barbados to a public event, and the letter was signed by a marketing assistant. Can you think of any greater disrespect than that? No. But that says something. That says something. She was in a panic. She was in a panic. Oh, we made a mistake. This is not protocol. Blah, 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 blah. But to me, it says something. When it comes from the marketing department, Let's say an assistant in the editorial department had written it. Or, a de or a, an assistant in the finance department had written it. But when an assistant in the marketing department wrote it, signed it, it says to me that it, this thing, this talk back was not about the development of Barbados. It was not about good governance. It was not even about the BLB. Marketing means sales. It was a marketing strategy to sell you papers. Why would the Prime Minister of Barbados, any Prime Minister, Tom Adams, anyone, go to help the nation sell you papers? Tell me that. Tell me that. But furthermore, furthermore, the topic of the discussion is who should leave Barbados or something to that effect. Now, what about the Prime Minister? You are the Prime Minister. You are the Prime Minister. If it is a, if it is a tall man who's Prime Minister, whoever Prime Minister, you are the Prime Minister. And you go on a discussion with people to discuss who should leave Barbados. But you will have to be a Mujin. You will have to be a Mujin to go on that panel discussion. When you are the Prime Minister, and you go with people to discuss who should leave Barbados. So, so the Prime Minister should go and say, no, say I think uh, you should leave. Or the whole the audience down there in the blue shirt, he should leave. But it's insane. And to make matters worse, how the error was compounded over and over. On the panel, she explained to me, but to be honest with you, I had not seen the ad in the paper. So she was giving me information. On the panel, they're proposing that Owen Alpha, Mia Motley, Harold Hoyt, and Peter Wickham be on the panel, and K. Mar is the moderator. Now tell me, tell me, all right. Excuse me and Owen, they be the opposition. But you had, you had Harold Hoyt. The week before, Harold Hoyt was on the radio saying that Fred Dutch Church should be the leader. Peter Wickham is on the radio regular 
Man, some people say every day. Regular. Every day, then. Every day. If you say every day, it's every day. Peter Wickham is on the radio every day. Every single day. Making fun. Jabbing. Insulting. So, so tell me. And then came Mara as the moderator. Why would, if you make, if you're making somebody an offer, you make them an offer that they can't refuse. They didn't watch, uh, what's the movie? The Godfather. You make them an offer they can't refuse. You don't go make the Prime Minister an offer that is so easy to refuse. If you take away all the other things that I mentioned, that the fact that it came from the marketing department, and the aim was to sell newspapers had nothing to do with governance. If you take away all of that, take away all of that, take away the other thing I mentioned, whatever it was, why would any prime minister go and put himself in that arena? It don't make sense. But it's easy to say no to. It's easy. By the end of the conversation, though, I told her, you know, people have this view that because they say parliamentary secretary the prime minister's office, that I am sitting on the the door and the prime minister is passing by me every day and say, do this, do that, or read these letters. But I don't know anything, honestly. We had a long conversation. I mean, she told me a lot of things. But I don't know anything about the prime minister's mail who gets it. I don't even know how to get back a letter from the Prime Minister. What are you going to say, Mr. Prime Minister? Excuse me, sir. The mayor should write you a letter. I know they want it back. You don't think I'm trying to show how to get up and give me a slap for a fight? Hey? Come on. And then, Mr. Prime Minister, the letter that signed by the marketing assistant, they said, Kemar Jordan says sorry and she want it back. And Prime Minister go through a fun search and say, hey, Harry, carry it. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. You want it back. Anyhow, that is my thing about, about that. I want to report to you, and this is an open invitation for the launch of our office. Well, but I don't talk so quick. We ain't got the money. I don't know if I could feed all y'all. <laughs> but who can't come could watch it on the net. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an open, open invitation. I need to come or watch it on the net. Now we, we, we a rock band down a place in the community. So some of y'all may not be able to find it. Right, so we can get off. So watch it on the net. But I want to report to you that the constituency, the DLP work in St. James North is on the way. We, despite whatever you may have read, despite whatever happened in the past, we have put all of that behind us. We have elected a new branch executive. Virtually all of our house to house campaigning is finished. We have reached the point of establishing the office. We have one or two little communities. We have one or two little communities to visit. They may be little, but, but they're important. So the work of the Democratic Labour Party in St. James North, as far as we are concerned, everything in past, who they like my nomination, who they like this, who they like that, that done. We turn over a new leaf. And we working. This man, Clinton Coppin, you don't let him mention his name, but he's called me and get times when I don't want to go, and I hide him. Sometimes I hide from him. John would tell, I hide sometimes from him. But you find me, he know where I spent my wife there, so. <laughs> he know where to find me, and he finds me, and we go, if it is only the two of us, we have a good thing, and we go and do the work, meet the people, and spread the gospel according to the Democratic Labour Party. <laughs> 
but we have a difficult struggle. We have a difficult struggle. And not because of the opposition, but the condition that we have found existing in St. James North. And particularly along the West Coast. I have said those people who have time and listen to the speeches from the Senate every time I get an opportunity, I mention it because I want it to get home. You cannot believe the neglect that the West Coast of Barbados has suffered for over 20 years under the Barbados Labour Party. It hurts my heart. Be, if you leave trends, playing field. And Trent's playing field is not in St. James North, it is in St. James Central. Leave out Trent's. That's a historical place, so on and so forth. But if you leave Trent's, travel north as far as Roadview, that is ours. They don't have a playing field. Not one. The young people along, they don't have a playing field. A playing field, things that, that are taken for granted through not even a bumpy play field then. Even if you had a bumpy play field, they don't have one. They have two areas to play a sport, which is essentially world tennis. The BLP had established or completed the center at Western, and they have some facilities there. Do you know the flood that washed away Karoo no joking matter, wash away all the facilities there, the hardcore and everything. And it was never restored. We restored the, the we restored the road tennis court. We have some financial challenges in the country, everybody knows. When things ease, we're going to pop up the basketball and the other things. But one of the pleasures I had was to see a big woman. Oh, my, my wife, she, she did. Um, she did with my sister, so I got to watch my mouth. So, so, we have restored that. Oh, I would say it. it gathers my heart or hurts my heart, whichever, to see a big woman say, and Western was a community known for road tennis. They, they're going to have later in the year a road tennis tournament there named in honor of Karoo. But a big woman who lived all her life in Western said she had never seen road tennis the evening that uh, Minister of Tourism Richard Seeley came down there, we played road tennis, and I beat him. And I beat him. I beat him. He's younger. The chairman described me as a baby. Well, my wife don't even call me baby. And he could he is younger, he's ten years younger than I am. He couldn't even bang up. Anyhow, the other issue. That hurts me. That is sporting. That's dealing with you. You cannot imagine how poor the housing situation on the west coast of Barbados is. Drive down Highway 1, turn right off the highway, any junction after you leave trains, and some places don't have road. At Christmas, I would deliver hampers, and I go through a track like this, the houses are so close, and to make the woman apologize to me, because I, my shoulders were, were touching the two houses, I'm not laughing, it's not a laughing matter, and the West Coast of Barbados, remember, some of the most expensive properties, not in the Caribbean, in the world, there, and the BLP has consistently and repeatedly neglected the area. If there is, God forbid, a fire in some of those communities, in the garden, Mount Stanfast, just off the main, if there's a fire, people will die. The housing solutions are that poor. Again, from, from St. John, 
was horrified, maybe places we have to go knocking at houses. And that has existed in this country under the Barbados Labour Party. And the representative, who's still the representative, is on record repeatedly. When they were in office, he still doesn't know. But when they were in office, he was in cabinet. And these vindictive people, because they didn't like him, did nothing. Did nothing in that community to support him. Maybe the hell is you that this is a BLP stronghold, so we don't have to do anything. And it gives an idea of the difficulty that we face right now when we go to people's houses and they complain. I mean, you can only say when you go to a person's house and they live in such conditions, I mean, you can only tell them so much about the evils of the BLP. After all, there's a point at which they may not want to hear that. The one, the problem that they face that way. And this is the challenge that we have. But I'm confident the little that we have done so far. We were in Lower character yesterday, and when the people came out, they said these roads have not been fixed in 20 odd years. Then fix now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fix now. In 20 odd years, I'm talking about Highway 1 in Barbados on what is described as the platinum course. So these are the challenges we face. But on a wider, a judge telling me to stop. I know start. He don't know what he can uncover. He telling me to stop one up. But listen, I'm talking. All day, all weekend, people calling me, telling me, say this, don't say that, don't mention that, mention this. Got my head confused. I'm talking, George. <laughs> Cut off the microphone. <laughs> this country, despite all the challenges, despite all the things that I've said about St. James North, the conditions, this country, in the face of the worst economic crisis in over 50 years, has enjoyed still, under our leadership, unprecedented stability. about this stability, when we talk about this stability, we use the usual thing about not laying off civil servants and so on. Last week I was listening to Brass Sacks, and it was the day Harry Hall was on, and they were on Friday's tour. Oh, he's this kind of leader, blah, blah, Harry, yeah, 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 going on and on and on. And at five minutes to 12, they broke for the CMC news. And they had three items. One was on Grenada. The situation in Grenada. The other man, seeing that my wife is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, she ain't here, so I'm talking. The situation in Grenada, where the government has stayed out of Parliament to avoid a no confidence motion. Unheard of. Then the next item, this is after Wickham and Hoyt were carrying on about how bad this country is, you know, and how poor the leadership is. The next country, St. Lucia, and this is the reading the news. St. Lucia, the Prime Minister says the worst challenges facing in the country, unemployment is at 24%. Then the next item was about Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know how close you follow what happened there. How some people in government went to parliament and had a sentence. I've never heard anything like that. That didn't even happen in, in Libya under Colonel Gaddafi. <laughs> they went to parliament and paroled a little sentence in an act. Saw some friends who helped them finance John and talking. Help them finance the election campaign, won't get extra. Some of the most outrageous things that 
that will never happen in this country, especially now with the leadership of the Democratic Labour Party. And they're talking about leadership. They're talking about leadership. They didn't mention Guyana. A couple of months ago, even though Guyana is enjoying economic growth, and there's a reason for that, even though they're enjoying economic growth, you know what happened? Two months ago in London, all kinds of people get shot down in the street, killed by the police, over a demonstration, and they talk about leadership, they have the goal to read that in the news, and then when the news done, come back and tell the Barbadians how bad things are in this country. That we don't have any leadership, no. and they want a new leader. And then they're on the, then they're on the, at the goal, he told them to invite the Prime Minister to town hall meeting to ask who should be the leader. <laughs> but quickly, let me tell you some things that, that happened in this country. Should we be so foolish to put back the Barbados Labour Party in office? Listen, listen. Oh, and I went to the Chamber of Commerce and told them this is after the business community agreed with the Employment Rights Bill. Oh, and after in Parliament they agreed in the the. News released from the from the BEC said fine we had our fill of that we see no problem. Oh, enough for went to the Chamber of Commerce and told them to fight against the employment rights bill. That Barbados is a funny place. That when you want lay off people, it's got too much trouble. This is the head of the Labour. This is the head of the Labour Party. Somebody said they want to see the day when somebody spit on when I was grave. They're spitting on Brian's grave now. In Parliament, on the Employment Rights Bill, they made a big fuss about the role of the Chief Labour Officer. Then it must have been that role of the Chief Labour Officer was in there and there just before Adam was a lad. There, the Barbados Labour Party is probably partly responsible for that part of the legislation. And this group today want to take it out. They want to, I know the leader goes to the Chamber of Commerce and tells them that he's going to make it easier. But it's so ridiculous that we finish off the Employment Rights Bill. The Employment Rights Bill in its several drafts was under Oenapa. He cussed me in government headquarters already because at the time I was working at the BEC and he cussed me for blocking the Employment Rights Bill. And now he goes to the Chamber of Commerce and tells them to fight against it. You understand what can happen in this country? Should these people get back in office? They want to put in place vouchers for education. They want to put in place vouchers for education. I'm finishing, George. They have vouchers now, you know, in education. What do you call them, Minister? Bursary. Where you get a bursary? When you get a bursary, the government pays $125 a term, and you go pay the rest. Right now, I checked with the minister today, it costs $1,500 a term to educate one student at Queen's College. So the government is going to pay $125 of the $1,500, and the rest you're going to have to pay. That's how backward, that is how backward these people are. And you can go whenever the election is called and put the next next and put them back in office. And then pay. I say they want to turn Queen's College into the Metropolitan. That is the effect of that. Tell them I say so. 
that is what the plan is. If you say for help. But if you watch CNN, you will know where this vulture thing comes from. It is the same thing that Romney is performing in the USA. It is the same thing. It is the same thing. So understand what type of Barbados we are going to have should these people and back up a office. Understand that. And let us together resolve tonight that it should not happen. It should not happen. We have stabilized this country. We are the ones to lead it forward. We're not going to spend sleepless nights coming up with policies to make sure that this country and this economy is stable and then to hand it over to a group of vagabonds. It will not happen. So, George made me speed up. What well, you have to say? But I, another time will come. When you come to St. James North, or you watch it on the net, I'm talking. I dare George Pilgrim stop me from talking, because I won't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much.